The entire kitchen crew here in the Green Pan Kitchen is all about classic comfort foods. And one that's very close to my heart are pierogies. So I'm gonna teach you how to make them from scratch all in our GP5 cookware collection. The first thing that we need to do is make the dough. I'm gonna start out with my flour and a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna stir those through. I'm gonna add in my eggs and stir those. Then I'm gonna add in my sour cream. I've got about a quarter of a cup of butter that's at room temperature. So I'm gonna switch from my spatula to my hands and finish working this together. All the moisture can clump up in one area, find those areas and kind of tear into the dough and pull it apart to see kind of how wet or sticky it is. And that'll give me a good idea if I wanna add a little bit of water to this dough. And this looks great to me. So I'm gonna put just a small amount of flour and and we're gonna need this for about five minutes until it's a little smooth, a little elastic. But if you feel it here, and it just feels like it just barely wants to kind of stick to your fingertips, but it actually doesn't, that's perfect. To me, this is just about right. And then I've got a little towel here. I'm gonna set this aside. So we're gonna make a really classic potato and cheese filling with our potatoes. We just went ahead and boiled them in our GP5 stock pot until they were tender enough to mash. Gonna take a potato masher and just start breaking them down. Once I got them started mashed down like this, I'm gonna add in some salt, a little bit of black pepper, a couple tablespoons of sour cream. Gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of butter and then our cheese. So about a cup to a cup and a half of cheese. We're just gonna keep mixing this up, mashing it up until everything is evenly incorporated. Now that the dough has rested for about 20 or 30 minutes, we're ready to roll it out. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour back down here onto my cutting board and a little bit of flour on top. And we're gonna gently roll it out. And every couple passes with the rolling pin, I like to give it a little turn. So what we're looking for here is about a quarter of an inch thick Make sure that your cutter's a little bit floured and go right on down through. We're gonna put about a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half of filling in here. I like to pick them up just like this, give them a little stretch around, and then you give it a nice stretch up and around the filling and bring it together at a point. And then just pinch down around one side, down to the ends. And then I go over to this end, and if you need to, give the filling a little tuck in so it's not coming out. And the same thing, work your way down this way, pinching all the way, and you seal up the ends. Once all your pierogies are formed, have them laid out on a sheet tray like this because it's really easy to be able to boil them in the water and then transfer the cooked ones over to here. We've got our water up to a boil here in our GP5 stock pot. So a nice, good pinch or two of salt and I'm just gently dropping them down into the water and they're gonna sink and that's okay. In a minute or two of cooking, they should float up to the surface and then you'll cook them for another two to three minutes until they're really nice and puffy. And that's the sign that they're done and ready to come out of the water. I've got my silicone strainer here, put them right back onto the sheet tray that they came off. Gonna add in a little bit of butter. The butter starts to bubble, it means that it's getting really hot. The water's starting to evaporate out of it. So I'm gonna go with the flat side down first. The GP5 is a great choice for this is not only with that stay flat bottom, are we gonna get an even here on all of them, but the design of the pan gives us more surface area on the bottom, which allows me to fit in more pierogies. So I've let them sit here for about two minutes. Let's take a peek, see how they're looking. That's exactly what I want. Lightly golden brown, a little bit crisp. Let them go another minute or two on the other side. Gonna transfer these back out to our sheet tray. Very quick brown butter sauce. I'm gonna add another three or four tablespoons of butter into our already hot fry pan, along with some sliced shallots and a little bit of salt and maybe some black pepper too. The browning can't happen as long as the water's there. So as soon as that's all gone and these bubbles start to calm down and get a little quieter, you know that you have to keep a close eye on it because the butter is going to start to brown. And give it a little swirl every once in a while. And while that's going on, I'm gonna lay out my pierogies onto my plate. If you just wanna add a couple spoons of water, it's gonna bubble and it's gonna splatter, but give it a quick little stir like this and it helps re-emulsify the butter into a beautiful sauce and we're ready to pour it over the top of our pierogies. Finish simply with a little bit of chopped chives, potato and cheese pierogies with caramelized shallots and brown butter. If you're looking for more classic comfort food like these potato and cheese pierogies, just head on over to our website and check out our blog, The Cook's Journal. Me and the entire kitchen crew have put together a list of our favorites and I know you're gonna love all of them.